So when I started looking into this, swastikas didn't show up nearly as often as I thought they would. Hi everybody, welcome back to A Well Read Nerd and welcome back to another one of my fun little kitschy videos if you couldn't tell from the intro. In any case, if you haven't heard about Ancient Apocalypse, good for you. Keep being the bright little marshmallow of a person that you are. Live your best life. I, however, did, thanks to this article that I found over on Mary Sue, or The Mary Sue. I'll link it down below if you want to read their take on all of this. It was my jumping off point. In any case, I saw the article and I hadn't heard anything about this TV show over on Netflix. Besides the fact that Netflix thinks it's 96% of what I would be into, they're not wrong, they just don't realize how much I hate watch stuff, so their numbers are a little skewed. But when I read the article and I started looking around what the basis of this article is, which we'll get into in a minute, I was like, I have to watch The Train Wreck. I have to. Deep in my soul, I have no other obligation than to see what is going on. So I binge watched all eight episodes. They aren't long episodes, they're like 30-ish minutes long, but they are sometimes a little bit difficult to set through. Like, not for any reason that anybody's probably thinking of, but rather for my own reasons. So today we're going to start all this conversation off with a fun term, pseudo-archaeology. If you don't know what pseudo-archaeology is, you can break it down phonetically and it basically means fake archaeology. But in actuality, pseudo-archaeology is something that's mostly people who are not qualified to talk about the things that they're talking about, expressing their opinion about archaeology. And not just expressing their opinion, I'm going to express my opinion in this video, but I'm a YouTuber. Like, I don't claim to be a point of authority. These people are claiming to be a point of authority, and that's where the problem comes in. So, what does pseudo-archaeology have to do with a show called Ancient Apocalypse? As you can tell, probably a lot. Now, the show is run, and I think produced, if I'm wrong, I'll put it in here, by a guy named Graham Hancock. If you don't know who Graham Hancock is, again, keep being the sweet, lovable marshmallow of a person that you are and go about your day. If you're just twisted enough to want to know who he is, stick around. So, Graham Hancock was once upon a time, a journalist. I say once upon a time because I, he doesn't seem to have done much in the way of actual journalistic pursuits since like the early 90s. He does, he's done a few like op-eds and stuff that I could like dig up, but considering most actual newspapers are like hidden behind a paywall and I don't pay for all of them, it's difficult for me to say for sure if he does or does not have any other like hard-hitting journalistic pieces out there in the last 20 years that I missed. It doesn't look like it. So once upon a time, he was a journalist. A fairly mediocre journalist from what I can mean, like mediocre back in like the height of journalism. So like you're thinking like he was writing in the time when like, you know, the Wall Street stuff was first coming out and people were writing op-eds on that during the AIDS crisis of the 1980s, during the first Vatican upheaval of the 1970s in through the 1980s. So there were a lot of really well-known names in journalism. He just wasn't one of those like, you know, big name journalists. But he seemed to have a perfectly lucrative career. Uh, I think he had some awards when I looked at his Wikipedia page. Don't remember what they were off the top of my head because I'm not super into journalism. But he was not somebody who was considered, you know, uh, a crackpot in his own field. So keep that in mind. What happened in the early 90s? In the early 90s, he wrote a book called Fingerprints of the gods. I had to look at it to make sure I wasn't going to say it wrong and to make sure I had the right one in front of me because all of his covers for his books, and he's written many, have vaguely the same stylistic thing to it. They think like a cheap James Patterson knockoff or an actual James Patterson novel, like that, like that very stereotypical cover to them. They're not really anything inventive or intriguing, but that was his first of many. He is not an ancient astronaut theorist, thank goodness. I, 
planning still to do an entire deep dive on that, but every time I do, I end up down a rabbit hole of like actual research in the history and then I get derailed. But think of like that, like, oh, there was this great civilization that came before and that's how all of these cultures managed to achieve everything was because of this mythical forebearer that came before. Also, if that sounds familiar, put a pin in it and we'll get back to that because it's very important. It actually hits two notes. But in any case, that was his first foray into this like pseudo archaeology because he's never actually done any archaeological work. He has only taken the archaeological work of others and then interpreted it for his own conclusions. That's where the pseudo comes in. And a lot of the contrition from mainstream archaeologists for pseudo-archaeologists is the fact that not a lot of them have actually spent time with boots on the ground. I have never actually been to an archaeological site technically. Technically, I had a friend break me into one when I was in college, but that's beside the point. And that time I almost got kicked out of the Temple of Apollo in Delphi. Also a different story, not for today. But I've never actually been part of an archaeological dig. I do know that they are long, they are tedious, and oftentimes the things that you find are of no other importance than to the other nerds around you that are super excited with this thing that you found. Like, that's just how it goes. So most archaeology is things that fly under the radar for normal people who aren't entrenched in either being super into certain historical periods or aren't super into like different archaeology and things like that. So most of what actually happens in archaeology is very, very, very boring for a layman. And Graham Hancock, like I said, has never actually like led or participated in, to the best of my knowledge, an archaeological dig. He's been on dig sites like I have and seen things that other people have pointed out, but he's never been a leading force in finding those discoveries, which, like I said, factors into that pseudo archaeology. He isn't putting in any delay work to find these discoveries. He's then drawing his own conclusions from them. Again, not as somebody who has spent years researching a specific area or you know, becoming familiar with different things that they found in archaeology, like as a, in a holistic way, but rather he's a cherry picker. And I love cherry pickers, don't you? What I mean is, is he'll take a bunch of archaeological sites that are out there and he'll pick the most interesting things to back up his theory. Think like that uh, thing, like, 20 years ago that everybody's mom still believes is true because it helps them cope where it said that uh, red wine and chocolate will help reduce your chances of heart disease and cancer. Those studies vary. And actually they, they won't. Alcohol actually raises your chance of heart disease. And there have been links to excessive amounts of sugar intake being tied to certain types of cancer. But they cherry picked some research and they plopped into a news article and some, suddenly everybody said it was okay for me to drink a half a bottle of wine and eat the entire bag of Ghirardelli. But in actuality, no, it's much more nuanced than that. It's the same way with archaeology and with Hancock here. He is not somebody for nuance. He is for finding those big things that prove his point. And it's very obvious as you watch the show. He doesn't go to small archaeological digs. There are a plethora of small digs going on all around the world right now, dealing with little like nuances and things. There's actually a very promising one. Uh, they might have, it's not the digging season there right now, but there are promising digs outside of Mycenae in Greece, which is like something that I was interested in in college. I went there to study some of the archaeology and things that were going on over there. But that dig is actually helping us to better understand the relationship between Mycenae and uh, what we refer to as the Minoan civilization, but we, we don't actually know what they called themselves and how actually the two civilizations actually interacted with each other, which is very fascinating, especially because we don't really know what led to the end of either civilization, not in any concrete terms. So for me, that is utterly fascinating. For somebody like Graham Hancock, not so much. Like those little nuances of piecing together history aren't really 
like what he's focused on and with that we're gonna have to talk about what he like I, I mentioned it but like the mythical civilization that came before the thing that all of these people had that was there and then the great cataclysm the ancient apocalypse wiped it out and that's the reason why all of these civilizations have similar things like you know pyramids because it's not you know, pure human ingenuity to figure out that if you put more things on the bottom and you taper up, you can make something that's higher. The kiddo figured that out. Uh, not well, but kind of figured that out. So if a toddler can figure it out, I'm pretty sure our ancestors could have figured out the same thing and used different materials besides like build blocks to do it but he he doesn't view it that way he doesn't view it as this awe-inspiring thing of human ingenuity to figure out how to do it he has to tie back into this advanced civilization that came before everything else and one that automatically puts a bad taste in my mouth because like it reaps of reeks of pan culturalism and i hate the, the notion of pan culturalism it robs the agency of a lot of indigenous cultures and like ancient cultures for their ingenuity for how they managed to achieve the things that they did and it's heavily steeped in i'm far enough past white supremacy and racism and that's just the truth of it nazis like, I don't want to drop Nazis in this video. I mean, I already did in the beginning with swastikas. But that has to do with something else I'm going back to later of where all of this notion came from. Nazis, like, Nazis believed in the quote-unquote Aryan race, this pure race from the society that came before that was somehow superior. Panculturalism and this ancient apocalypse theory looks very similar to that. Is it the same... Not necessarily, but they have the same foothold of how they built up to that in the same spot. And that is largely the Theosophic Society. I want to make sure I was saying it right. The Theosophic Society is basically a society of neo-mysticism, spiritualism, and like this greater like earlier knowledge you can tap into the world sort of like uh, miss i guess yeah miss, i already said mysticism but that's basically what it was yeah it was read it was led by and founded by somebody named helena petrova Belovsky as her name this is what she looks like she is a complicated character she was born in russia she basically studied in India, claimed that these ancient mystics that had this mystical knowledge, for whatever reason, gave it to her. And then she took it around the world and introduced other people to it. Uh, if she was a charlatan or she actually believed in what she was saying, it has been lost to time. There's nobody who can say one way or the other. People have strong opinions based on some uh, some facts some anecdotal things i believe is probably 50 50 i believe didn't start in, in a genuine place and by at the height of her like popularity with the society i think she'd sort of bought into her own bullshit so there's that she believed she was this mythical like sage that could save the world and like the great knowledge that came before was sort of her stick but there were people who came later who built on top of those the one that i'm pretty sure hancock is getting his notions from is this guy it's ignatius donnelly who on top of believing that atlantis was real and that's where everything in civilization came from he was also a u.s senator in the 1800s so things haven't changed much think of him as the victorian marjorie taylor green meaning he had a lot of ideas not really much to back them up besides the fact that he goes i said so but yeah he wrote a book about atlantis and the fact that it was real and that's a lot of where like the atlantean like is real thing came from which by the way is somebody who was forced not really forced i chose my major in college but if you don't know i was a philosophy major you can't be a philosophy major without having to read literally every single thing Plato ever wrote. And I read the Timaeus multiple times while I was in college. 
If you don't know what the Timaeus is, the Timaeus is the dialogue in which the story of Atlantis first appears. Context is everything. In that story, in the Timaeus, Atlantis being this place of hubris that the gods punished for overexerting themselves isn't taken to be like, look at this great civilization. It's very clearly meant to be an allegory for how if you put your own needs and your own grandeur ahead of everything else, you are setting yourself up for failure. Now, it could very well be built based off a myth that existed or that Plato heard while he was traveling around, or like it said, I think it was his grandfather brought it back from Egypt. It's completely likely it, it, the nuts and bolts were a story that he had heard. But like, this is the same guy who wrote the allegory of the cave. Like, he knew how to spin a story. So keep that in mind when we're talking about Atlantis. This guy, <clears throat> Donnelly, just straight up believed it was 100% true. It was out there and you could find it. Yeah. And that's where Graham, like, sort of becomes the latest in a long line of people who believe that. Because, spoiler alert, the entire thing, this mythical civilization, which for like the first four episodes of the show, he does not mention Atlantis at all, okay? He keeps saying this ancient civilization that existed before and this cataclysm that happened. And about episode four or five, towards the end, he just suddenly drops the Atlantis bomb. This great mythical civilization, Atlantis. And that's where everything came from. Now, he, up to this point, has made apologetics for ancient and indigenous myths and legends about where people came from, trying to explain it through like this ancient civilization. He makes no such reservations about Atlantis. That maybe it was called something else. Maybe it was a, a several civilizations that became like entrenched into one mythos over the centuries. No, in his mind, Atlantis is a thing, and it was called Atlantis. It was this great society that existed before and had all these technological advancements that then dispersed all over the world when this great catechism happened, and these people helped build them help build society back up, which also denotes that there was society to begin with, which sort of undermines the notion that there's just a bunch of people around like staring at rocks all day and then somebody like came up and went, hey, like I know how to make a civilization. So take that into consideration too. The thing about apologetics in any like sphere is the fact that they always miss the most basic things of like, well, if they came to rebuild society because he says that many times there was a great cataclysm the atlanteans came or this ancient civilization came to help rebuild society well that would denote that there was a society there to begin with so the notion that there was an ancient society that existed and the reason why everything in the world is similar well those those people have had civilizations before then like yes that pushes back the notion of when we think civilization began, but every, you know, six months they dig up something at uh, Gobekli Tepe that undermines when, how old we think civilization was, which is fine. Most archaeologists are cool with that, considering we're pushing it back. Like, Hancock wants us to go back, like, 10, 20,000 years of actual archaeology. It's like, look, they might have figured out how to build, how to make beer 500 years before we thought they could. <laughs> that kind of thing. And also, he is the epitome of a guy who doesn't realize when he's not wanted. What I mean is, is there are several, like, long, he talks to actual archaeologists. There are several long pauses and pointed looks that still made it into this dark documentary from people who are actually trying to find additional information to rewrite some of our notions about how uh, different things came to be. Like there's by the, way, the underground like city in the Middle East. I'll put it in the name here. I'm sure you've seen it on things. It's basically where it's been continuously occupied in some form or another for about. 2000 ish years we don't know exactly when it could be actually earlier than that because of the type of um like volcanic rock it's easy to chip out it would have been easy for even earlier hominids like maybe not even homo sapiens to have chipped out like in alcoves to live in there and that stuff 
Well, the actual archaeologists and anthropologists are trying to see exactly how far back that goes, maybe rewrite some things about when it was actually first made a habitat that would make it easier for us to look for other fossil records and things like that. There were several pointed looks, like to the point where there was this guy, and I'll just pop in the clip here if I can find it exactly what episode it was, when he was asking pointedly about whether or not there could be an ancient civilization, he was basically like, yeah, I guess so. So now the really big problem with uh, things like this, and the reason why I'm talking about it today, is because the American Archaeological Society, that was specifically the president of it, had to release a statement, a letter to Netflix, asking them to please, please, not refer to this as a documentary. Specifically, he said, I write this open letter to express the Society of American Archaeologists, and I got the name wrong, concern over the series Ancient Apocalypse, hosted by Graham Hancock, produced by ITN Production, and aired on Netflix beginning on November 11th. This series publicly disparages archaeologists and devalues the archaeological profession on the basis of false claims and disinformation. I write to encourage you to completely clarify the genre of the show, to provide disclaimers about the founded suppositions in the show, and ideally to balance the deleterious content in the show with scientifically accurate information about our human past. Later on down towards the bottom, he actually goes into three specific points that the society wants to bring up about this documentary. It says, we have three principal concerns with regard to Ancient Apocalypse. One, the host of the series repeatedly and vigorously dismisses archeologists and the practice of archeology span with aggressive rhetoric willfully seeking to cause harm to our membership and our profession in the public eye. Two, Netflix identifies and advertises the series as a docu-series, a genre that implies its content is grounded in fact when the content of the show is based on false claims about archaeologists and archaeology. And then three, the theory it presents has a long-standing association with racist white supremacist ideologies, does injustice to indigenous peoples, and emboldens extremists. Which for anybody who doesn't know the history of, the arch of archaeology, there's been great steps made in like the last 30 years, but specifically even like the last 10, to try to give credit, as much credit to indigenous cultures and not to put everything through a Eurocentric lens. And it's actually opened up a lot of avenues for finding new information because they're not thinking in the same, same mindset they were before. And they actually want to distance themselves from that old, like, crusty European aristocrat goes and digs up somebody else's home because they can kind of mindset with archaeology. It doesn't open very many doors these days to act like that. And then it concludes by saying, for these reasons, we call upon both Netflix and ITN production to remove any labels that state or imply that this series is a factual documentary or docu-series and reclassify the series as science fiction. I love that cheekiness. We urge both Netflix and ITN productions to add disclaimers to the series that the con that its content is unfounded. We also request that Netflix develop a policy that balances such false narratives with the presentation of scientific documentaries and accurate reporting on the knowledge that archaeologists have generated and continue to generate every day. Thank you, Daniel H. Sandvice. PhD, RPA, president. So, uh, I do love the science fiction thing. It's very cheeky. But uh, even though I love this letter, it uh, it's not going to do anything against Netflix. Nothing. Netflix isn't going to pay attention to this letter uh, at all. And the reason why is because people watched Ancient Apocalypse. They don't care. Their business model is tanking. They have no appreciation for actual people out there who are doing actual archaeological work, who are making 
groundbreaking discoveries in their fields are developing new forms of technology to better be able to carbon date things, to figure out how to redo ancient pigments, because that's a thing. I watched a video about that on the Science Channel the other night about how they figured out how the Egyptians made cobalt paint. It's fascinating. That is very interesting, and people will still watch that, but like, I don't know why ne I know why Netflix wants this. It's because it's that ancient aliens craze. Anything that's sensational will, will get people to talk about it on the internet. I am talking about it on the internet. I don't recommend going and watching the series. Find somebody who bootlegged it on YouTube. <laughs> Do that. And he doesn't get any money. Um, <laughs> that's my opinion right now. Or whatever bootleg site you go to. I don't know. Let's figure it out. Yeah, do that. Because uh, he doesn't deserve any credit. And I'm going to completely undermine him with this. He is not speaking from a place of authority. If you want to give me a DMCA on this, I don't care. But yeah, like he is not speaking from a place of authority. He is speaking as an armchair archaeologist. This thing that most people who are in these fields loathe. Somebody who sits around and goes like, hey, yeah, no, like, I totally know what that is. Yeah, right. No, you don't. Like, nobody does. Like, yeah, you can have fun with it. I've mentioned it here before. I once spent an entire summer trying to decipher linear A. Why? Because weed was expensive that summer, so I had to make do with alcohol and I get crazy when I drink. But yeah, like, it... It, like there's a difference between having a passion for something like I do I love these things I love talking about them and like you know different archaeological sites different things that they're discovering new technologies that they're discovering I like talking about that however I am not an authority I'm a philosophy major at a liberal arts school with a minor in history I am arguably more qualified to talk about it as opposed to Graham Hancock but that's a low ball bar to clear. Like, it's practically on the floor. You know what I mean? Like, he's done nothing besides pump out these books and go talk to people at archaeological sites, like a journalist, that would make him an authority. But he's not an authority. At most, he is an authority to regurgitate whatever those people are telling him in a stylized manner. That's not what he's doing. He's taking what they're telling him and then twisting it to meet his own narrative of this ancient apocalypse where Atlantis was a thing and like the the flood from the Bible was totally real and it wiped out a lot of people and it wiped out Atlantis and then those Atlanteans went off to other places in the world and that's where we get Quetzalcoatl in South America because he doesn't he's not described like you know as somebody who would live in South America so he must be an Atlantean that came from this disheveled Atlantis and made it all the way, all the way over there. And then that's the reason why they have pyramids in South America. Be wrong. <sighs> ah, ah, I can't express how frustrated I am that this man has a platform to spew this vitriol shit out for you guys to watch. And I, yes, I watched it. I also, like I said, hate watch a lot of things, okay? Like, that's on my mental health, not on you guys. But yeah, he, uh, I just, I can't codify into words how frustrated this man makes me. I can't. I can't. If you guys are pissed off too, comment down below. I gotta get cheeky with it, but <clears throat> yeah, like this entire thing is just, it's a cash grab to sell what other, like I guess his books aren't selling well anymore. I don't blame anybody for not wanting to read them, but yeah, it's just, it's a cash grab and I'm turning red because I'm angry. Um, it's fine. It happens. Yeah. It's, it's a cash grab because his books weren't selling anymore. And Netflix decided to cut him a check because they'll cut a check for anybody. Anybody. I'm pretty sure at this point, if I could fake a few letterheads, I could get a documentary budget from Netflix because they'll just throw money at anything and hope and pray people watch it. So yeah, overall, I think that the American or the Society of American Archaeologists did the right thing by sending out this letter. It brought a lot of attention to it because like if I hadn't seen that Mary Sue article, gone over to, you can, I'll link it down below. You can go over and read the 
letter that they sent in its entirety over on their website so you know exactly what their points and stuff are you can read the mary sue article if you want their take on it they're pretty similar to mine uh most of their editorial stuff is i only disagree with them on movie reviews usually or at least the stuff that comes across that i find that i usually agree with but i'll link both down below and you can you know check those out and see for yourself uh like i said i would not recommend watching this documentary one uh it will in fact rot your brain uh i'm fine once again i'm a youtuber so like it was already a little to begin with but let me go know your guys's honest opinion please nobody come down there and tell me that they fully believe well you can tell me that you fully believe his atlantean theory that's fine you're entitled to your opinion i guess um i'm going to calmly inform you that you're wrong uh there is no evidence empirical or otherwise to denote that atlantis actually existed as anything other than an allegory like i already stated you can go down and try to explain how pan culturalism like explains the reason why we have all these things that are the same across cultures except for the fact that humans all have the same brain capacity and we can all figure stuff out eventually like that's how it goes but yeah let me know down below uh if you agree with me you can let me know that too it's nice to know because i have a feeling i'm gonna get a lot of comments and they're gonna make me want to turn comments off on this video if it goes anywhere near as like blew up as some of my other ones have that's fine balance it out um if you have any questions about anything that i talked about in here anything you'd like me to talk about more please comment down below uh, i thank you guys so much for watching uh, i hope this is at least entertaining for you yeah let me know if there's anything else that that i mentioned here that you want more information on or you have a question because i i didn't put everything in here then that would be an over an hour long of listening to me ramble uh if you like this kind of content and you want to see more like it hit the thumbs up button that's what lets me know that you guys are interested in seeing it it does not always guarantee that i will make the same kind of content because my pain is once again a bag full of squirrels that didn't get their adderall because there's a national shortage so uh i will always circle back to things later if i feel like there's something that i want to talk about so feel free to comment uh if you would like to subscribe and see more of my crazy off the wall content please feel free to subscribe all right with that being said i thank you guys so much for sitting through my rambling and my vitriol and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.